Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Lydia from the Boston Library. Thank you for joining me for story time. Today we are talking about St. Patrick's Day. So I have a couple of stories to share with you and some music. We're going to start with this book called St. Patrick's Day by Anne Rockwell. On St. Patrick's Day, I wore my green shirt, green pants, and even my green striped socks. Pablo wore green sneakers. Everyone wears something green on St. Patrick's Day. At school, we worked in teams to finish our St. Patrick's Day reports. Charlie, Jessica, and me, Nicholas and Sarah, Pablo, Kate, and Sam, and Michiko and Evelyn. See them all working on their projects? Mr. Cisco helped Charlie and Jessica and me find out about St. Patrick. He helped us type the story we told. And here's their story. This is the story we printed out, St. Patrick's, by Evan and Charlie and Jessica. One bad day, people took St. Patrick from England across the sea to be a slave in Ireland. Patrick was a shepherd. He didn't fight with anyone, but he missed his mother and father, so he escaped. But before long, he went back to Ireland to teach people to be kind to each other. Nicholas and Sarah wrote a play. Nicholas said, I am St. Patrick. Do you know why there are no snakes in Ireland? No, everyone replied. I drove them away, said Nicholas. Sarah was a big green snake slithering across the floor. Nicholas rang his bell and beat his drum. Hiss, hiss, I'm scared, said Sarah. I'm going to run away. Follow me, snakes. Hmm, said Nicholas, all the snakes are racing to the sea. Now you know why there are no snakes in Ireland. My bell and drum scared them away. Clang, clang, boom, boom. Pablo, Kate, and Sam loved music. Mr. Kelly, the music teacher, taught Pablo and Sam how to dance a jig. And do you know what instrument she has there? Kate fiddled fast while Sam and Pablo danced. They wore green top hats. They looked like leprechauns that made mischief on St. Patrick's Day. So there she is with her fiddle, which is also the same instrument that we call a violin. Evelyn and Michiko told us about a special plant St. Patrick brought to Ireland. Do you know what plant that is? They explained how he planted shamrocks. Shamrocks are bright green plants with three round leaves. They brought a shamrock for each of us in a paper cup. I'm going to plant mine in the garden. Mrs. Madoff said so many Irish people came across the sea to America that we celebrate St. Patrick's Day, whether we're Irish or not. Many Americans are a little bit Irish, but not me. I'm all Irish. My mom and dad were born in Ireland. My grandparents and my aunts live there. I went to visit them when I was four. Here's a picture of me in that green, green land. When I got home, mom was baking soda bread because that's what her mother always did on St. Patrick's Day. People put on their best clothes and wore shamrocks. They went to church to pray the way St. Patrick taught them. When they came home, they had a fine meal with soda bread. We took a loaf to Pablo's mother. She said it smelled so delicious. We should have a slice with some hot chocolate. Yum. On March 17th, we all wear something green. That's because it's St. Patrick's Day and St. Patrick's Day comes just before spring. The sprouts that come up in spring are green. That day, we are all a little bit Irish. I wanted to take a minute to show you what an Irish jig would sound like on a violin, just like the one that Pablo and Sam danced to that Kate played on her fiddle. So I have my violin here to show you. A jig is a particular type of song. It is usually in 6-8, so we have six beats per measure, 
and you would do a specific type of dance to it, but you can dance any way you feel like to this song. This is called Swallowtail's Jig. <laughs> Another standard type of Irish music is called a reel, spelled R-E-E-L, and that's a different type of dance. It's also usually pretty fast, so I'm going to play a reel for you right now. story is going to be in song form. This is called the Ratlin Bog. And for those of you that don't know what a bog is, it's kind of like a swamp. So throughout this song, we're going to learn about all of the things that are in that swamp. The chorus repeats between each verse. So once you've heard it a few times, feel free to join in and sing along with me. Oh.
Our last story for the day is called A Fine St. Patrick's Day by Susan Wojcikowski. For as far back as anyone could remember, the towns of Trali and Trala had been rivals. Every year on St. Patrick's Day, they held a contest to see which town could decorate best for the holiday. And though the people of Trali tried their hardest, they never won. The prize, a golden trophy in the shape of a shamrock, was always awarded to Trala. Each year, when the winner was announced by the official county judge, the people of Trali sighed and said, next year we'll win, to be sure. And the people of Trala laughed at them. No, you won't. You have always lost and you always will, they said. One year, the mayor of Trali rang the bell in the town square, calling all the townspeople to gather. When everyone was there, he said, little Fiona Riley, though she be a wee lass of six, has come up with a fine idea for this year's contest. We will win to be sure, but only if everyone agrees to it. Little Fiona's plan was to paint everything in the town bright green. Tis a fine idea, said Emily O'Fallon, but will all of our homes be painted green? Yes, said the mayor. Tis surely a fine idea, said Reverend F Flaherty, but will even the churches be green? Yes. Tis a most excellent idea, said Brogan O'Neill, the school principal, but will the school be green? Yes, said the mayor. Everything right down to the wee doghouses will be painted green, except for the mailboxes, said Mr. Root, the postmaster. They are government property. And the fire hydrants, added Captain Blazes, the fire chief. They must stay yellow to be seen. A hush came over the crowd as the townspeople thought about the plan. When the mayor asked how many wanted to paint the town green, everyone shouted and cheered and whooped and hollered and said, "'Tis a fine idea. This year we will win to be sure." And they agreed that little Fiona Riley's name should be engraved on the trophy. The people of Charlie bought painter's hats and coveralls. They bought brushes and rollers. They rummaged through basements and sheds for ladders and buckets. And little Fiona was allowed to choose the shade of green that they would use. Emerald Isle, Limerick Lime, or Galway Green. Fiona chose Limerick Lime. Mr. and Mrs. Kelly, who owned the hardware store, ordered hundreds and hundreds of gallons of Limerick Green paint. Meanwhile, the people of Trala were planning too. They decided to cut shamrocks from green cardboard and sprinkle them with glitter and hang them from every branch in every tree in town. On the day before St. Patrick's Day, as everyone in Trali and Trala was busy working on decorations, a little man on a large horse came galloping across the meadow. He wore red trousers, a brown leather apron, and boots decorated with gold bells. His beard came all the way down to his stomach. Pointed ears stuck out from beneath the brim of his hat. His horse had long satin ribbons braided into its mane. The man turned towards Trala and stopped at Mrs. Donegal's house at the edge of town. He pounded on the front door. Mrs. Donegal, scissors in hand, answered. Frantically, the little man asked, begging your pardon, can you help me? I was leading my cows across the river and sure in Begora, they are stuck in the mud. You picked the wrong day to ask for help, said Mrs. Donegal sharply. I'm cutting shamrocks. And she shut the door in his face. The stranger hurried to the next house. When Mr. O'Leary answered the door, the little man asked, begging your pardon, can you help me? I was leading my cows across the river and sure in Begora, they are stuck in the mud. Away with you, said Mr. O'Leary. I'm busy cutting string for our shamrocks. But the river is cold. My cows won't last much longer to be sure, said the stranger. But Mr. O'Leary had shut the door and gone back to measuring his lengths of string. At the third house, the little man asked again, begging your pardon, can you help me? I was leading my cows across the river and sure in Begora, they are stuck in the mud. The McLeans, their hands covered with glitter and glue, looked annoyed. Don't you know what day this is? Mrs. McLean asked. We're busy getting ready to beat Trolley in the contest. At every house, the stranger was turned away. Finally, he crossed the field into Trolley. At the first house he came upon, he asked, begging your pardon, can you help me? 
I was leading my cows across the river and sure and begore, they are stuck in the mud. Mary Kate Driscoll was on her ladder, paintbrush in hand. Her overalls were splattered with limerick lime paint. Her face was smudged with limerick lime blotches. And she climbed down and looked at the little man. She looked at her house. She scratched her head. Follow me, said Mary Kate. She ran to the town square and rang the bell until the townspeople came, wearing coveralls and painter's hats. The little man yelled out to the crowd, begging your pardon, can you help me? I was leading my cows across the river and sure and begora, they are stuck in the mud. What about the painting? Someone shouted. What about the contest? Called another voice. This is the year we'll win, to be sure. What about the trophy? A third person called out. Little Fiona Riley was sitting on top her father's shoulders, listening. She looked down at the people, all spattered with limerick lime paint. She thought about the golden trophy. She thought about having her name engraved on it. Finally, she called out in a voice loud and clear. But what about the cows? We need to help the cows. A hush came over the crowd as everyone considered what little Fiona had said. "'Tis a fine idea," said Emily O'Fallon. "'Tis a fine idea, surely," said Reverend Flaherty. "'Tis a most excellent idea," said Brogan O'Neill. When the mayor took a vote of how many people wanted to help the stranger, every hand went up. The crowd shouted and cheered and whooped and hollered. All the people of Trolley headed to the river. The children, the old folks, the families with babies, they went in wagons, on bicycles, and on foot. They crossed the meadow, and they headed towards the sound of cowbells. And when they reached the river, sure and begora, there were the little man's cows stuck in the mud. Everyone pushed and pulled and tugged one by one. The cows were freed from the mud at the bottom of the river. The sun had long set by the time the people of Trolley got back to their homes and fell into bed, tired and wet. Ah, well, Next year we'll win, to be sure, said the mayor to his wife as he sank into a deep, snoring sleep. The following morning, the people of Trolley woke to the sound of bells ringing in the town square. They ran outside in their pajamas and nightgowns, and in the case of Mr. Murphy, bright red long underwear. Do you see Mr. Murphy in that picture? What they saw was so incredible they could barely believe their eyes. Every inch of Trolley was green. Sparkling, shimmering, glimmering, glorious green. From the wee dog houses to the tall spire of the church, except the mailboxes being government property and the fire hydrants, which remained yellow so they could be seen. And the people of Trolley shouted and cheered and whooped and hollered, this year we'll win to be sure. And they did. When the official county judge rode through the two towns, he declared Trolley to be the winner and handed the mayor the prize. The trophy case in the town hall was no longer empty. It now held one golden shamrock, which would soon be engraved with little Fiona's name. As the St. Patrick's Day supper of lamb and boiled potatoes was set out in the town hall, the mayor asked some of the townspeople to find the stranger and invite him to the party. They rode across the meadow beyond the river as far as the peat bog, but they could not find the little man or his cows. All they found was a single cowbell. It was made of shining gold. And though the people of Trolley passed the golden cowbell from hand to hand and talked throughout supper about the glimmering, glorious green miracle, no one could account for what had happened. All they could remember was the tinkling sound of the little man's boots and the beautiful ribbons in his horse's mane. Little Fiona Riley remembered that when the man thanked her at the river, he said, you have already won. As the sun began to sink behind the hills, the town slowly faded back to its real colors. "'Twas a fine St. Patrick's Day, the mayor said, and he took the golden shamrock from the trophy case and put it into little Fiona Riley's hands. Everyone shouted and cheered and whooped and hollered. The following year, when it came time to plan how to win the contest, little Fiona Riley, though she was but a wee lass of seven, had an idea. When the idea was put to vote, everyone shouted and cheered and whooped and hollered. That St. Patrick's Day and every year afterward, they would take the shamrock and the golden cowbell out of the trophy case and polish them. 
the people of Trali would no longer compete with Trala to win another trophy. They would decorate their town and share a meal of lamb and boiled potatoes simply for the joy of it. It was a fine idea, to be sure. I hope you enjoyed our St. Patrick's Day story time and happy St. Patrick's Day. Remember to wear something green on Wednesday and we'll see you next week.